Hey guys, it's Kira, and today I'm super excited to be sharing my TBR for Book Roast's annual Owl's Magical Readathon, which is taking place in April. Now this is my first time taking part in this readathon, so I'm super excited about it. Last year I only heard about it after it was like already taking place. Don't know how I missed it, but I just didn't hear about it until I saw everyone already tweeting about it once April had already started. So it was a little bit late to start, and then I didn't manage to catch up before August when the mutes took place. So I just kind of thought I'd just give last year's Magical Readathon a miss and just wait till this year when I could actually do it properly along with everyone else. And now it's almost April, which means it it's time to start thinking about my TBR for the Owl's Magical Readathon. Now, if you've taken part in this readathon before, you'll obviously know how it works, but if not, Basically what happens is every year a careers guide is produced which sets out so many of the different magical careers you might want to go into if you lived in the wizarding world and it basically then breaks that down into all of the different like owls and the newts that you'd need to get qualified with in order to go into that career in later life. And then there is also another section which then breaks down all of the different subjects into prompts so you know based on whichever career you've chosen which subjects you need to study and therefore for which books you need to pick based on the prompts. So I'm probably making that sound way more complicated than it needs to be, but it is a really, really fun way to go about choosing your TBR for a readathon. And obviously I'm just giving a very brief summary there, but I will put Book Roast's video with the announcement for this 2020 Magical Readathon in the description below. So you can go and watch the full announcement and hear all about this wonderful readathon. Now I actually had a little bit of a struggle trying to pick my magical career and then obviously my TBR because I obviously want I wanted to pick a career which sounded interesting to me and it was sounded like really cool but I also needed to be feasible and realistic with how many books I could actually read in a month because some of the careers obviously sounded really cool but they had like 10 prompts which I just know I wouldn't be able to fit in and around work so in the end I picked out two careers not sure if that really counts but I've done it anyway the first one has five prompts and that is going to be my main focus for the month and then the second career sounded really cool to me and I think you'll understand when I say which one I've picked why it sort of fits for me and that one actually only has four prompts but three of those prompts are also the same prompts that are included in the original career I've picked and then there's just one extra so I'll focus on that first career to begin with and if I manage to read all five books that I've picked for that TBR then I can read one extra which also would allow me to do the other career so it kind of means I could be like you know do my main job and also the side hustle and I'll get to read six books so without further ado I'll tell you which books I have picked and obviously which careers they'll be going with. Now the first career I've picked is to become an aura. Now I'll put up a like picture on the screen of the like page from the careers book so you can see everything that it says about becoming an aura but I feel like that one jumped out to me because I feel like auras are one of the careers that we hear most about in the Harry Potter series just because it's what Harry and Ron decide they want to do and um, through the Order of the Phoenix we also meet quite a few other people who have that career path so I feel like it just sounds really interesting and I'm someone who likes quite a lot of variety and I feel like being an aura seems like a very varied job and you'll be doing lots of different things all the time so I feel like as magical careers go it would be a really cool job if you didn't want to be doing the same thing every single day. Now as you'll be able to see from the page on the screen the five owls that I'll need to get to progress with this career are charms, defense against the dark arts, herbology, potions and transfiguration. And then the second career that I've gone for is culinary sorcerer which as I'm sure you'll be able to tell from if you've seen any of the other videos on this channel I love food and cooking just as much if not a little bit more than I love books because I'm just obsessed with food this channel actually started out pretty much just being about food and then books came along later so I feel like if I was in the wizarding world being a culinary sorcerer would probably be quite a cool career for me and I feel like maybe I could be like a culinary sorcerer blogger and be like a wizarding food blogger if that's even a real thing because if it's not then I'll just make it so. So basically this career as you can tell has four owls that I'd need to get to progress with it and three of those are the same as the ones that I will need to become an aura but then there is also arithmancy so if I manage to read the first five books from my TBR then I can also read a sixth one which fits in with the arithmancy prompt so without further ado I'll go through the prompts and which books I've picked for them. So starting with charms the prompt is Lumos Maxima pick a book with a white cover or at least a mostly white cover so for this I have picked The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. 
Now this is going to be a reread for me and I did mention in a recent video where I was talking about book series I want to read in 2020 that I was going to be restarting the Raven Cycle because I read The Raven Boys last year and I really really enjoyed it but when I went on to read The Dream Thieves I just really checked out of the series and didn't have such a good reading experience but because so many people love The Raven Cycle and because I enjoyed the first book in the series so much I really do want to give it another try and see if I can really enjoy the series and I feel like part of the mistake I made was leaving too long between the various books in the series. So because it's been quite a while now since I read this book and since I attempted reading The Dream Thieves, I thought I might as well start the series all over again from scratch. And because this book has mostly white cover, well, it is a white cover with a raven on. So I feel like this counts. I'm going to use this as a great excuse to restart the Raven Cycle series. Next up we have Defense Against the Dark Arts for which the prompt is Grindelow's read a book set at the sea or the coast. Now for this one I've picked The Beach by Alex Garland which I have ordered but I'm still waiting to arrive so I'll just put a picture on the screen of the cover which I think is a really beautiful cover, it's such a cool colour but this is obviously a book called The Beach and it's no surprise that this book is set on a beach. Now I've actually been meaning to read this book for several years now because I have seen the film version with Leonardo DiCaprio so many times and I think it is such an interesting story about this really unique cult-like community on this kind of like hidden beach in Thailand and it's such an interesting story about how this community sort of forms and could so easily be broken and it's such an interesting story and I didn't find out until quite a long time after watching the film for the first time that it was actually based on a book and since then it's always been in my mind as a good book that I'd really want to get around to at some point but I just have never bought it or really thought to pick it up it's just kind of been like an afterthought whenever I've heard about it but now I have to read a book that's set at the coast a book that's literally called The Beach seems like a perfect choice so I'm really looking forward to reading it and probably also re-watching the film because to be fair it's been a while since I've watched that as well. Next up we have Herbology so Mimbulous Mimbletonia read a book that starts with M and that is such a tongue twister I'm surprised I actually managed to say that but to read a book that starts with M I really had only one choice because I've tried to limit the amount of books I've had to buy for this TBR because I'm trying to focus a little bit on reading what I already own obviously I've already ordered The Beach and I've I think I've ordered another book as well so basically I was trying to make sure I did at least read some books I already owned and I only had one book that I hadn't read that started with an M so that is Middlemarch by George Eliot. Now I was gifted Middlemarch for my birthday last year which was in May so we're coming up to almost a year of having this book on my shelf and not reading it so it does seem like a great time to try and tick this one off my TBR and I am really excited about it because I really have enjoyed reading George Eliot's books in the past in particular I read The Mill on the Floss at University University and thought it was a really interesting and quite in-depth character study which I personally really enjoy and I feel like this book is meant to be quite similar to that just in terms of the way that it delves into characters over quite a long period of time. Now from what I understand about this book which granted is not a huge amount it focuses on a small community at a time when industrial revolution is quite a key thing and so it's obviously changing a lot of people's lives and the landscape of how people live in quite a significant way and I feel like it deals with that as a key theme along with just all of these smaller dramas and lives of all of the people within this community and so that is really not a huge amount of knowledge about what I'm going to be getting into but I do know that George Eliot does as I said write really interesting in-depth character studies and so I'm sure no matter what the book really delves into I will really enjoy learning about the characters and watching them develop alongside the sort of landscape of the world which will be developing into an industrial revolution which is really interesting so looking forward to finally taking this one off my tbr and obviously including a classic in this tbr as well so next up we have potions for which we're going to need a shrinking solution because the prompt for this one is to read a book that is under 150 pages now I knew I didn't have any books on my shelves that were under that page length because I knew I'd already read all of the books I had that were that short which to be honest is not a huge amount of books because that is quite a short read but in the end I ended up using the Google Doc that's been set up for this readathon where people can actually leave recommendations for each of the prompts it's such a useful resource so I'll link that down below as well if you're struggling to think of any books 
books for your TBR, but I ended up choosing Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Now I've ordered my copy, but it hasn't yet arrived, but I'm really looking forward to it arriving because I've ordered a really cool cover, which I'll put somewhere on the screen, but it's coming as part of a duology along with Alice Through the Looking Glass, but I will only be focusing on reading Alice in Wonderland for this readathon, although if I have time, I might read Through the Looking Glass as well. But there is two separate books in there, so it does count as being under 150 pages, and I'm really looking forward to reading it because Alice in Wonderland is just such an iconic and well-known story, and I can't believe I haven't actually read this book yet, especially given that it is such a short story. Next up, we have Transfiguration, for which we're going to be focusing on Animagasis, or Animagi, not sure which is the correct pluralisation, but basically the prompt is to read a book which focuses on or includes shapeshifting. Now this is perfect for me because I've been meaning to continue on with a series which definitely includes this theme, and this is the perfect excuse to finally pick up the next instalment of the series, and that is A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin, which is the fourth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. Now obviously if you've seen the Game of Thrones TV show or read the books you'll know that one of the key themes within the book is the introduction of the faceless men who are a group of people who can basically like take other people's identities and sort of like mask themselves behind it. I feel like that's a terrible explanation but if you've seen Game of Thrones you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and I've heard that this is the installment of the book series in which that becomes like one of the key themes. I might be wrong but I'm almost certain that that's the case so I'm definitely counting this as a book which includes shapeshifting. So those are all of the books that I will need to read if I want to continue on the career path of becoming an aura. But as I mentioned, if I do manage to finish all of those books, I'll also be trying to pick up a sixth book, which would allow me to also become a culinary sorcerer if I so desire. So the book I'd need to read for that one is the Arithmancy Prompt, which is Magical Qualities of the Number Two, focusing on balance and opposites, which means basically reading a book that is outside of your favourite genre. I did kind of struggle though to decide which my favourite genre was because I do really delve in and out of all kinds of different genres and enjoy loads of different kinds of books. Contemporary is probably my favourite if push came to shove but it isn't that I love it more than all of the other ones because I do still really enjoy things like fantasy, historical fiction, thrillers and horrors and all of those kinds of things. So instead I decided to go fully opposite to what I would normally read and went for a non-fiction because non-fiction is a type of book that I very much never really reached for. I think I've read like one non-fiction book in the last year and I did enjoy it but I just never ever think to pick up non-fiction so I feel like it is definitely outside of my favourite genre of fiction. I enjoy reading fiction so I feel like going for something non-fiction is quite different. So the one I ended up going for was Educated by Tara Westover which is a memoir and definitely fits into the non-fiction category. So Educated follows Tara's life story as she was brought up in a very cult-like community in which she didn't really have access to any of the things that most people take for granted in terms of like medicine or education as the book predominantly focuses on because she wasn't even registered. I believe she was also brought up in a relatively abusive abusive household and at one point in her life she decides to basically leave this community that she's been brought up in and make her own way in the world and basically she goes on this really incredible journey of education. I'm assuming both in the literal sense of like actual academic education as well as emotional and social education as she comes to terms with living in the sort of real world having been brought up in such a unique situation. So it sounds really interesting. I feel like as a memoir it still has a story-like style to it because it is still someone's life story. It just happens to be based in reality. So I'm really looking forward to reading it and I hope I do manage to read the five prompts that I need to um, read to become an aura so that I can actually get around to this one this month as well. So those are the books I'm hoping to read in April for the Owl's Magical Readathon and just in general I'm so excited to be finally taking part in this readathon because I feel like I've been waiting so long for this readathon to come around so I'm super excited to get started. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be taking part as well and if so which books you'll be reading and let me know if you've read any of the books on my TBR and what you thought of them. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time!